Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another played up automation tutorial. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about salads. And what you see in front of you here is what I've found to be the best and most compact way to do salads. Salads prior to the introduction of pizza was super easy because you would basically mimic this setup and this setup for tomatoes. You could use a smart grabber, you put it here, you have your bin, grabber, etc., etc., and that's how you would do it. Now, olives don't need a prep station because olives are one of those things that you can pick up just like you can just, um, you know, grab your plate, you pick it up um, after you have your lettuce on, you tap it just like you tap all of these, like the interact button to tap all of these. Same thing with the olives. If you really wanted to, you could put olives up here and just feed them with a conveyor belt or with a grabber into a prep station if you really wanted to. But again, it's not needed because these act as a prep station themselves. Actually, I guess a frozen prep because they never run out. Now, again, onions and olives, you only have once you get the the extra toppings card. I'm not sure what it's actually called, but it's the one where it gives you onions and olives. So to start off with, you'll just have lettuce and tomato. Now, lettuce, again, is super easy. You can use conveyor mixers for this. You can also use regular mixers, rapid mixers for either one of these. It does not matter if you would use a different type of mixer. You would just have a conveyor. I say conveyor belt, but you know what I mean when I say conveyor belt versus grabber, etc. You have a grabber in between the mixer and the prep station. These would just be pushed back one space. So pretty simple. And again, these could be configured various ways. These could be coming in from this side. Those could be up top. It doesn't matter. They're very modular. They're a four by one. They're four, four deep by one wide setup uh, or five deep, one wide if you're using another type of mixer in a grabber. Now, with all of these, you could use a heated mixer for all these because it doesn't matter because none of these ingredients could cook by themselves or cook at all, really. So it doesn't really matter. The But tomatoes are what people have trouble with. And there are setups where you're basically running a mixer with regular grabbers pulling into like two, three prep stations that are lined up with sauce. And that's how people, some people do it. And I shy away from that because one, it takes up so much space. And two, the mixer will continue to make sauce as long as there's a spot for it to be put. So if you reduce the amount of spaces that it can actually make sauce, it's not gonna keep making sauce. Now, this design does require the use of a compactor bin. A compactor bin stores one item only, but then it empties itself automatically. And a compactor bin takes approximately 10 seconds to run one cycle. You may say, wow, 10 seconds, that's pretty long. Well, I don't think so because you have one plus four. That means you have five tomatoes. Are you serving five tomato plus lettuce plus other things in 10 seconds? I don't think so. Even if you're the fastest person ever and you're just grabbing, tap, 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 like I, I don't think you're serving five portions of tomatoes in 10 seconds. If you are, you could just extend this out to make more. You could double up this prep station. You could put a, you could put a grabber, um, something like this, and just put another prep station here or do it something like this and have a prep station. So there are other ways to add on to your tomato pile, I guess, if you will. But... The way this works is the tomatoes are grabbed in the back. It goes into a, this is a regular mixer. Do not use a conveyor mixer here because a conveyor mixer will push whatever is finished onto something else. And you don't want to do that. You want to have a regular mixer and you want to have your smart grabbers determining what gets pulled when. So I'm going to do a little quick run through here and you're going to see exactly what happens. I'll give a little description is you're t and you're say, well, no, it's just going to make sauce. No, no, it won't because the smart grabber will prioritize what it grabs based on the action before it. So because this is grabbing the first chopping action, it'll do this, as you see. So right now we have five tomato portions, and if, as long as we keep grabbing tomato portions, like serving super, super quick, I'm actually at a, I don't have any other place to put these down here. You can see now we're into making sauce. So the way this is set up is it's only gonna have three sauces made at one time. And as soon as you start grabbing from this again, as long as you grab it early enough, I don't have any spot to put these. Look, see there, I missed one, but look at that. By that time, this is ready to go, and there's one here. Now you may say to yourself, well, what if you have multiple bins? Well, the problem with multiple bins, though, is the fact that then the multiple bins will keep running at the same time. And I haven't found that having two bins constantly running with sauce makes it any better. Because, I mean, you pull this away, again, are you going to be serving five portions of tomatoes plus lettuce plus whatever else in 10 seconds. I don't think so. Uh, I mean, if you are, hey, hats off to you. If you're running some sort of automated 
conveyor belt system, then this may not work for you. Like an automated dish delivery system coming straight from this with combiners wouldn't work. Um, it's possible, but it's not recommended. So having multiple bins like this, I don't really feel there's a point. Now you could do the expanded bin, which has more slots. So it, but the problem with that, as I said, just two seconds ago, is this will continue to keep making sauce, make sauce, make sauce, make sauce. So to me is have it make as little sauce as possible. Because as soon as you pull this away, this finishes in 10 seconds. Like I said, are you going to be waiting that long for this? And, I don't, and the answer is no. You're, you're uh, now I'm picking up everything. Well, I guess there's demonstrating how you can get all four things. I don't have any place to put this. Um, so I'm just going to hold on to it for the rest of the time. So basically, that's that. There are arguments about using the prep stations, but the issue with all of this is it'll continue to make the whole time. And that's why I wouldn't recommend using anything but a compacting bin. Uh, because if not, you're going to be fighting a losing battle because, because this thing will continue to make sauce, continue, continue, continue to make sauce um, until it doesn't have any other place to go, to be honest with you. So this is my recommended setup for doing auto salads or as close to auto salads as you can. Uh, as I said in the beginning of the video, if you're pulling out more than five portions of, of tomatoes in less than in 10 seconds or less, add another prep station, add some place else, add another conveyor belt, add, you know, you can kind of put this system like this and have it looping around so there's just more tomatoes on here uh, to keep the mixer going from making sauce. But again, that's up to you guys. Um, this is the basics of it. The onion's easy, olive's easy, lettuce, these are the easiest ones. That This is the one that takes a little bit of extra time. So anyway, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully this has helped you setting up your automatic salad runs. Um, there are many, many methods how to do it, but I find this is the best method where you're making the least amount of sauce, thus having the least amount of sauce to deal with somewhere until we get something like a, you know, a programmable mixer or a smart mixer, which I don't know if anything like that is going to ever exist in the game. We have to do it in some sort of method like this, or you do it the old fashioned way of hand cutting it on a workstation with a sharp knife. But again, that's not automated. And the key, the point of these videos is to show you how to automate as much as possible for your food dishes. So thank you guys so much for joining me. This has been a you know a pretty easy one to make, a lot of fun though. And I know some people have really struggled with this. So hopefully this helps you with automating salad with the least amount of mess or least amount of waste possible to keep and also to keep that mixer flowing. All right, guys, thanks a lot. And stay tuned to the next food automation tutorial. Take care now.